what a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth, even angels bow before you. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. We serve. Him. Let's give him praise. Say something to him because he is worthy. He is worthy of our praise. We give glory, we give honor unto your holy name. Thank you, Jesus.
but because it is in your nature to be good. Lift your voice and just celebrate the goodness of God this morning. Celebrate his goodness. Celebrate his loving kindness. Celebrate his faithfulness. I don't know what you may have experienced in the last weeks or months or even years, but celebrate the goodness of the Lord this morning. The fact that you are alive this morning. Yes, you have breath in your body. Celebrate the goodness of God this morning. Give him praise and worship. Worship and exalt his name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness. 
Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your amazing, amazing, amazing grace. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for your love. The love we enjoy on a daily basis. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your voice and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we honor you this morning. We bless your name this morning. Someone put their hands together and just celebrate the King of Glory in this room this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are happy to be in this place this morning, shout hallelujah. 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 God loves it when we come together, you know. He loves it when we come together in his name. It is not because when we're not in this place, God is not with us, you know. Do we agree? If we're not in this place, is God with us? Yes. It's not that, but he loves it when brethren come together to worship him together, to lift their voices in unity and to bless his name. So it is a joy to have you here this morning. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to, um, to be together and worship the King of Glory. I just want to welcome you once again to the presence of God today. Welcome this morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, the day that the Lord has made. And we rejoice. Hallelujah. We rejoice and we're glad in it. The sun is shining outside. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. So you're welcome. If you're here this morning and it's your first time worshiping with us at Petra House Andover, can we please see your hand up? It's your first time. It's your first time. You were, you were about to distract me there. I thought your hand was up. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> There's one hand there in the corner. Please, can you um, rush to them? There are another two people outside. Is there no room in the inn? There's room. They're, they're just outside. Oh, they have a baby. Oh, wow. Okay, you're welcome outside. Oh, you're welcome. Lovely to, lovely to have you. Please welcome them. Celebrate them. Any more? Are there any more? Any more newcomers? Your first timer? It's your first time here? Hallelujah. Oh, there's another hand up behind. Please don't miss her. Thank you so much for coming. We love to see you. We celebrate you. Please don't go in a hurry. The welcome team would like to meet you better. And they will just, you know, give you a little form to fill so that we can get to know you. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. If it is your second time worshiping in Petra House, can you please put your hand up? Your second time? No? No second timer? No. Oh, hallelujah. There's one. There's always someone that returns. Hallelujah. Lovely to see you. Thanks for coming back. The Lord bless you indeed in the name of Jesus. And if it's your everyday dose, Sunday, Sunday, a regular timer, an all timer, come on, celebrate yourself this morning. Hallelujah. We love to see you. Amen. Amen. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be doing two things um, as I'm standing here this morning. The first thing I'm going to uh, lead us into um, our Titan offering. And then the next one, I'm going to lead us into a session of prayer. Is that okay? Yes? Okay. So we're going to be taking our Titan offering now. The, the, the projection, I think the details will be projected shortly. If you need the account details, wait for it. It's coming. And um, if you need an envelope, please let the ushers know so that they can place an envelope in your hand and you can give to God. Okay. All right, I'll just welcome the choir to take us in a, in a very short session of praise as we, as we receive your offering. Please give cheerfully. Uh, can you please look at your neighbor? Maybe they're busy punching the details on their phone. But even while doing that, you can do it cheerfully. Look at your neighbor. Say, please give cheerfully. Please give cheerfully. Please check, 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 check again, check again. Are they giving cheerfully? Uh -huh. If you're going to give cheerfully, you're going to also demonstrate it. So please, can you join me as you rise up? And we're going to worship God with our, with our sound as well. Amen. You are good. You are good, Jehovah. You are good. 
If everybody testifies, you are good. You are good, you are good, you are good. Hallelujah, everybody testifies, you are good. You are so good. You are good, Jehovah, you are good. You are good. Everybody testifies, you are good. You are so good. You are good, Jehovah, Everybody, oh, everybody testifies. You are good. You are good. You are good. You are so good. Everybody testifies. You are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. You are so good. You are 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 you are highly lifted Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for an opportunity to give. Thank you, Father, for putting seeds in our hands to give unto you. Lord, we give you praise for this wonderful privilege. We ask, O oh Lord, even as we pray over the offering, that, Lord, you will cause it, O oh Lord, to enlarge and prosper your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Cause every hand that has given this morning, cause them to remain blessed forever in the name of Jesus. For every hand that is unable to give for one reason or the other, Lord, we pray that you bring them to that point where they can give as well and be a blessing to many in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us this morning. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You might as well please remain standing because we're going to be praying. We give praise to God. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful day to be alive. I'm just going to take us in a few minutes of prayers. Are we together, church? Please, children at the back, don't distract. This is a very important moment. Don't be a distraction. Okay, praise God. And I'm just going to give a backstory. So, April 2021... The doors of this very room that we're in was open to us. And it was a great thing, April 2021. I think that's, that makes it three years now. It was a great thing because at that time, there was a, there was a need. We were worshiping somewhere else before, and um, we were, it was no longer suitable, right? So we started looking, and then COVID struck. And then at the time of COVID, we kept praying that, that God should relocate us to somewhere better, somewhere, somewhere different. And God willing, this place became available and uh, we started worshiping here. And um, fast forward to three years down the line. One thing I want to bring out of the, that story is that this place being open to us is a church, as you can see, it's a Methodist church. It wasn't because they grew and they expanded and they were looking for somewhere else to, to move to. It was actually because they declined in number. They declined in number so much, so much that this place was too big for the number of people they had. And it was pointless keeping this place running just for those few people. There, there was a decline in membership and in growth and people coming into church. And that's when you think about it, even though it opened the door to us, when you think about it, that is quite sad. That is quite sad. Why, why was there a decline? There was a decline because... They were all of a certain age, people that were coming to church. And because of the, the laws of nature, everybody at some point had to take a bow, right? And they started taking a bow one after the other, one after the other, up until they probably were left with seven people. And they just could no longer sustain this place. And we're glad and we're happy that we're able to sustain and continue as a church. But I feel sorry. My heart goes out to, to them. You know, at some point, the people that owned or that, I feel bad for keeping you standing. Is it okay? If you want to sit, please feel free. You know, at some point, at some point, the people that were running, that were, um, that were foundation members of this church, 
didn't want to agree to that, um, to that move. And they were fighting it, but there was, there was just no way they could carry on. So fast forward to today. Today might just be our last Sunday here. I don't know, but it might be our last Sunday here. And we're moving to somewhere else. And if you've been in church for a few weeks, you will know that um, it's not because we decided to move now. It's because they decided that they want us to move now. It is also not because a, another church is coming here. It is because they find that we are no longer the people they want here and they want another set of people here. And that set of people happen to be a nursery and they feel, well, you know, they can run it as a nursery. Where am I going with all this story? Is the fact that there's been a decline in the knowledge of God in this nation. And that thing actually really gives me sleepless night. If you know me, you will know. I don't like to hear that a church is closing down in a place of worship that was purposely built to worship God. Many of them in this, there's hardly any village in this nation that doesn't have a church. With every development plan in every town, every city, they allocate a space for a church. So if you go around, no matter how small, there would always be a church. And one after the other, one after the other, they begin to close down. You see some of them close down, they become a pub. Some of them close down, they become houses. People actually say they like the feel of living in a church, yet they don't believe in God. It's just so heartbreaking. It is so heartbreaking. And I'm calling us to rise up to pray. If this happens to be our last Sunday here, I want us to drop some seeds of revival, even in this premises. Drop some seeds of revival. We're going to move from here and worship in a school. We're going to drop some seeds of revival, even in the school. Because you find that even in our schools, even the church schools, they're starting to dilute their messages. The message of the Lord is being diluted everywhere. And it is just a painful thing to watch. It is a painful thing to watch. So brethren, I want to encourage us this morning. I want to enjoin us. Let us pray. Let us pray for this nation. Let us lift an altar of prayer for this nation. Let us stop being selfish about our prayers. Let us stop being selfish about our needs alone. Let us raise an altar of prayers. Generations have faded away faded away, completely faded away just because somebody did not continue what was handed to them. People are dying and churches are becoming empty because their children are not taking over from them. Raise an altar of prayer this morning. If you're thinking of what to pray about, just say, Father, let your glory fill this land. Let your glory fill this room. Let your glory fill this nation. Father, let your glory. Lord, let your glory. Father, let your glory fill this nation. Let it fill this nation. Oh, fill this nation with your glory. Oh, fill our lives with your glory. Lord, fill our lands with your glory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Whilst we're looking for a place, you know, we went to look for somewhere, we went to look at somewhere, another church that is being closed down in town, and we went to view it. And um, we have a friend of the house who goes to another church, but he happens to be a, a builder. And he came with us. He came with us. He's a local. He, he was born and bred and grew up in Andover. So he knew everything about this town. And um, he came with us. And as soon as he walked into that church, he said, do you know this is the oldest church in Andover? This church is, has been put up for sale. Again, for the same reasons. No members anymore. And they're 
having to close it down. Now they want to sell it to the highest bidder, whoever had the biggest money. I hear that most ladies have approached them. You know, I took the microphone off, off deliberately. So people of the other faith have approached them and they're willing, they're open to selling it to them. And I think of these things and I just think, you know, God needs us. God needs, say, say to someone, say God needs you. God needs you. Because if it, the power of God alone could cause churches to stay open, no church, church will close down. No church. No mission will stop. Because the power of God is there. However, he needs the people that walk on the face of this earth to bring it to action. He needs you. He needs you to pray. He needs you to go out. He needs you to spread the news. He needs you to do all you need to do. And he said, you know, this is the oldest, oldest church in Andover. He said, but God is shutting them down because they are diluting their messages, because they are allowing anything, anything to happen. And God is shutting them down one by one. And I felt so bad. I felt so bad because what is going on in the mind of those church leaders? We don't know, but we know that they've erred. That was not how it started. In the beginning, it was not like that. We're going to pray. We're going to contend for the gospel over this land and we're going to make Andover a point of contact to every neighboring cities, towns, even the whole of United Kingdom. We're going to contend for the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Can you lift your voices and begin to pray? Father, by your power today, Likhando Shabrada Zadaya, Ekasataba Mandraka Leprosukata Shandabaya, from Andover to Salisbury, to Tidworth, to Lugershaw, to uh, uh, Newbury, to Winchester, to London, to Hook, to Basingstoke. Oh, we contend for the gospel of our Lord Jesus we contend for the gospel of our Lord Jesus we contend for the gospel of our Lord Jesus oh not on our watch not on our watch someone pray that prayer passionately this morning oh thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me quickly. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. Oh, Mason, Trabosh, Calibra, Gazanda, da, da. We know that the book of Revelation is a book of prophecy, right? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Revelation 11, verse 15. Oh, Mason, de, 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 Amen. It says, then the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign when? Forever and ever. This is a prophecy. And this prophecy should begin to be fulfilled even in our days. We want to see a glimpse of this prophecy. Can you lift your voice and begin to pray? Father, we want to see a glimpse of this prophecy. We want to see a glimpse of this prophecy. Oh, Maratosia Tabaya, the kingdoms of this world becomes the kingdom of our God and it reigns forever and ever. And it reigns forever and ever. Lift your voice and pray this morning. Rakasata Bashala Brakada, Rekebuska Libraka Tashkata, Imbaso Kataba Lika Toshke Leketeya, Inga Labraga Lisu Kata Kele Prokoshkataya. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, you reign forever. You reign forever. Lord, you reign forever in Jesus' name. We have prayed finally from me. We're gonna pray for ourselves. For yourself, you're gonna pray this morning. I'm a part of this army. There's no going back. Once you've been drawn into the kingdom, you're a part of this army. You cannot leave, you cannot watch it go to ruins. You're gonna pray. We're not gonna stop. You're gonna pray for yourself. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I will not stop. I will do all that you have empowered me to do until I see Habakkuk 2 verse 14 being fulfilled here on this earth. In the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus that you will do your part. You will not relent. That you will do your part. Whatever it is that God has laid on your heart. Whatever it is that is calling you to do. Whatever it is that is calling you to do. You will not stop. You will not stop. I will not stop. I will shout it. I will sing it. I will write it wherever, however, Lord, you want me to present it in the name of Jesus. Oh, mashali breke sende ba ba ba, rasha da ba 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 ba. Oh, seketele posh kataya. Oh, masanta ba ya. If you can just display for us Habakkuk two verse fourteen. Habakkuk two verse fourteen. Thank you, Jesus. 
chapter 2 and verse 14. Oh, we will no longer be comfortable. We will no longer be comfortable. We will no longer be comfortable until we see that the earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Oh, I will no longer be comfortable. Oh, pray for yourself this morning. Say, I will no longer be comfortable. I will no longer be comfortable until I see, until I see. and just bless the name of the Lord and give him praise. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, you reign forever. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. We and honor be unto you, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. The glory and honor be unto you, Lord. The glory and honor be unto you, Lord. They belong to prophetic season of this church we give you praise Jesus we thank you we worship you glory be to your name Lord in the name of Jesus amen praise God hallelujah please be seated God bless you please be seated good morning church 
Good morning. You're, you're welcome to church. Please help me welcome the person sitting next to you and say you're, they're welcome to church. Mm. Say something nice to them. If you're sitting next to your wife or husband, you can, you can make them feel good. Show them some love. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. It's good to have you in church and to see your lovely faces. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, so I've got a bit of mixed emotions this morning. Praise God. Um, yeah, you know. Maybe like, I feel like somebody is being, is being jilted. <laughs> you know, you can't hear me. Sorry, when you see God next time, tell him to give me a bit louder voice. <laughs> All right. Okay, I said I feel like someone who is being jilted, whose um, girlfriend is being taken away. You know how it feels? Yeah? All right. <laughs> no, my wife is not being taken away. She can't go anywhere. Praise God. We're stuck together for life. Hallelujah. All right. Somebody copied my color this morning. Brown and black. Yeah. Giving love rhymes. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, let, let's be serious now. Okay, so uh, we have a meeting with the school on Tuesday, Rookwood. And um, if everything goes according to plan, by the grace of God, it will go according to plan. Today is our last Sunday here. Praise God. Today is our last Sunday here. Um, I do not think that it's sustainable for us to be here anymore, even though we have it until the end of the month. But I think it's just easier and better for us to, to move Right, the school is just down the road, about one minute drive from here, so it's not too far. So watch out for information on um, on the church WhatsApp group, on our Instagram, and if possible, we'll try and update our website as well. Yeah, before before Sunday. Um, um, it's been about three years of God's faithfulness in here. Praise God, and um, God has been good to us. Praise God, you know. So we have no reason to, to sorrow or to be worried, okay? Yeah, when I got the news. So if you're, just, if you're worshiping with us this morning, please bear with For the first time, please bear with us. It's because of what's going on with us. Our kids don't normally stay in here, okay? They usually have their room, but that room is, is packed up with many things. So it's safer for them to be here with us. But we hope that once we move to the school next week, we would have them separate. Is that okay? All right, so please enjoy the noise, all right? <laughs> as I preach, please enjoy the noise as well. Praise God. I'm actually not preaching so much. I'm conscious of the fact that, you know, I have children in the room. So I'm just going to say one or two things that I believe that God um, has spoken ahead of us as a church and that, you know, that would help us as we, as we move, move on. Praise God. So it's been about three years in this building, about three years, and we have enjoyed the goodness of God, right? God has been so good to us. He has been so good to us. So I'm going to be playing two videos for us to watch this morning. Um, 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 uh, and, um, you know, as a pastor sometimes, when God tells you certain things, you can't imagine how it's going to play out, right? I, I, I didn't imagine that this is how this is going to play out. You know, I know that we needed to move, but I just felt, okay, when we are ready, you know, when we get the building, we we'll just move. But sometimes, God will disrupt the plans, you know, and, um, and take you his own way, which I believe is what's happening to us. So the first video, if you're ready, so I'd like to play this video to you. I, I, I said this during the anniversary, and I'm going to explain the reason why go. I played, oh, hold on, please, why I played this, I'm playing this video. Because of what's been playing out, you know, it just looks like everything I said in this video is beginning to come to pass. And then I'll play Pastor Agu's um, video, second one, the message he preached during our anniversary last year. So when we said the new, this is our journey to the new. It's our journey to the new. All right, so let's watch the first video, just about a minute, and then I'll come back up. And then we'll... Forever to go, because I believe that this is a multi-generational church. God will help us to remain functioning until Jesus comes. Our vision remains the same, to raise and disciple stronger believers. Believers who will replicate the same until the knowledge of God spreads throughout the earth as the water covers the sea. 
because we will play our part in the body of Christ. We will continue to invest in spiritual growth activities, standing by our core values, which is love, integrity, faith, and excellence. Starting with Andover, our small town, and then we we'll see how far God can help us to spread the gospel. So we intend to set up a system that produces leaders that is currently being worked on as it will help us to manage the growth we're experiencing as a church. We hope that we can leverage the diverse gifts amongst those leaders that will then be used to set up ministries that will meet the very needs of our society and our community. We also intend to set, step up our evangelism drive as a church. We've not done much of that since COVID, but you know, we intend to step up and win more souls for the kingdom. And most importantly, we've been hiding, you know, we've just been building ourselves in house. We're going to integrate more with the community and be more visible in the town of Andover. God helping us because we believe that the glory of the latter house will surely be greater than the former. So watch out for more work to be done for Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you notice towards the latter end of that video, I said something about the community. Don't worry, enjoy the noise. Praise God. After all, we were once like them. Do you remember when we were in children's church? Yeah. How many of you spent your offering? <laughs> oh God. Uh, I spent mine. You know I spent it. You should know now. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So, you know, if you notice towards the latter end of the video, I spoke about the community, isn't it? Right. So, in the last two months or thereabout, we, God has opened doors for us to the point that the mayor of this town knows that we need the building. Right. And what has happened is that they, they are lining up events for us to come and minister at that event. You know, one of them is the Christ Christmas light in this town. They've invited our choir to come and sing when the Christmas light of this town is going to be put on. There is a, there is a diversity, what is it called now? There is a diversity and inclusion program towards the end of August that the town, the Andover town is planning. And I said to them that I have over a hundred members that can pull their weight behind that program. They were shocked. They were shocked. So they're looking forward to us helping them out to, to plan the program, right? So it looks like what I said in that video that it's time for us to move into the community is beginning to play out. It's beginning to play out. Now, one of the guys that's been helping us look for a building that my wife mentioned earlier on, he was born in this town. And you need to see the way this man is contacting everybody to help us out, to help us out. So God is opening doors of opportunities for us in this town, and um, we're, we're going to see how God will help us to change this town for Jesus in the name of God. And that's what's going to happen. Praise God. That's what's going to happen. You know, I like to read a scripture. I like to read a scripture to us this morning. And that's in Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. I have a few scriptures to read, but maybe I'll just take one or two. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 17 to 18. You know, the more you think you know God, the more you realize that you probably don't know him. You know, it's very easy for God to just give us a building next door or somewhere and just say, okay, now that you've outgrown this place, just go, just go to the next building. You know, it's very easy for God to do that. But look at what God's track record Look at the track record of God. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 17 to 18, please. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 17 to 18. Okay, right, let's read together. It says, Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, Although that was near, for God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. Just like this scripture says, you know it's easy for God to just lead the Israelites through the shorter path, isn't it? 
but it took them through a longer journey, right? Think about Jesus. Don't you think it's easy for Jesus to show up one day and just be killed one day and, you know, his ministry is ended? Don't you think it's possible? But God had to take him through the, the baby stage until he was about 33 and he had to go to the cross, right? The shorter way is not usually the way of God, right? And so our move to Rookwood, right, even though it may be a little bit inconvenient and uncomfortable, God is taking us to a safe place. Yeah. He's taking us to a safe place that I'm very sure of, that I'm very sure of. He's taking us to a safe place. And um, I can tell you conf confidently that once we move to that place, we're going to move one more time. Amen. We're going to move one more time once we settle in because we're still going to outgrow that place and then we'll get to our final destination. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'd like to play a second video. I'd like you to watch the second video. This is just to remind us that when we're going through this season as a church, it's important to know where we're going and to know that God is looking after us. This is all according to God's plan, okay? Is that okay? All right, so please, can I, can I have the second video? That's about 10 minutes, so please, let's watch this. Pastor Hago. You are Petra House, that God says he's doing a new thing. And when you look at what new means, you begin to get excited. Because I understand that new means that it is fresh, it is original, it is creative, it is current. And the word I love is that it is unprecedented. That means that if God says he's doing a new thing, he's doing something that he has never done before. Thank God for all the things he has done and he's adding to. But God says to Petra House and to your life, I'm going to do something in your life that I have never done before. Somebody who received that should be getting excited about what God is going to do. The third thing is that those scriptures make something clear to us. In fact, the way the scriptures put it, in a sense... Is God challenging us? He says the, 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 the fragrance of the flowers is whispering there is change in the air. People want new things, Chevelle, but they don't want change. People want to control the way the new thing comes. When I saw the theme, I, I said to myself, I hope Shea and Torayo know exactly what they're doing. Because they're about to invite the Holy Spirit to come in in a way that might even shock them. Because when you, God wants to do a new thing, there must be change. If you say, I'm believing God for a new thing, you're saying to God, I'm ready for the change that will come as a result. And sometimes the change is not what we want because it is God who is doing the new thing, not us who are doing the new thing. You know, human nature wants to control it and, and, and construct it the way that is comfortable to us. Sometimes change is not comfortable. Is anybody still waiting, wanting God to do a new thing? Yes. The good thing is that because it is God, he gives us an advance warning. He gives us the grace also for the change. That if you want the new, some, something has to change. Can someone say amen? amen? Don't be so radical, Peter. Well, we are all disciples. All of us know Jesus. But Peter, have you not seen the waves? Have you ever heard that anybody walked on water? Peter, do you want to drown? Peter, stay here. Calm down. There are 12 of us. What makes you different? Peter, you want to follow Pastor Turayo? Don't follow her. At the pray at the she prays. Peter, you don't pray like her. Stay in this boat. It's safe here. And there are well-meaning people who, who say that. There are decisions I've wanted to make. And well-meaning people have called me. Well-meaning people who I admire. Well-meaning people who I look up to. Thank God that we can hear the word of God and not the word of a man. Because not all men who are stopping you mean evil. Some of them are stopping you because they care for you. And they're thinking this is a bit radical. It's a bit too much. Nobody has done it. What if you lose everything? What if you die, Peter? We want you around, Peter. But Peter 
Pastor have kept saying to himself, but I heard the Lord say, come. I heard the Lord say, come. And so he steps out of the boat, in faith, out of the boat. But anybody who says they want the new must be ready for what I call the rites of passage to the new. <laughs> and the way God explained this to me, he used the example of a child being born. Now after conception, the child starts to grow in the mother's womb. I don't know if you've ever spoken to a child, and you haven't, because they don't talk um, at that stage. But if you could, they would tell you that this, this, where they are, is the most comfortable place on earth. That's why when you go to do the scans, most children are doing somersaults. It's somersaults of joy. It's, life could not be better. This is a fantastic place, and may I be here forever. That's what that child is thinking. The child doesn't even have to ask for food. Forget Uber Eats and Deliveroo. <laughs> the umbilical cord feeds the child without the child asking what kind of life. That is life. And the child is in that state for eight and a half months, almost nine months. And then one day, somebody say with me, one day. One day. <laughs> one day. No warning. Nobody comes to tell the child life is about to change. The mother, her waters break. That comfortable environment that was created by the water suddenly disappears because all the water has come out of the mother. Nobody told the child. And the child is thinking, what is going on? My world is changing. Can I say to someone whose world is changing, God is behind the change. <laughs> Even if Satan is the instrument, Satan does not go on an assignment that God does not allow him to go on. God is behind the change. And so the environment changes. And then it doesn't just change, the environment starts to fight the child. That's what the child thinks. Because the muscles start to contract. The space starts to reduce. The thing that was so comfortable starts to poke the child. Someone is being poked. It's, you're being poked for change. Suddenly, it's, it's not working how it used to work. That's because you were so comfortable in how it was working that God needs to do something to push you to the next stage. They told their story of Petra House. It was the discomfort of Two families and two children, being the totality of the church, that drove them to the place of prayer. And it is in that place of prayer that they birthed this Petra house. May they not wait for more discomfort before they go deeper into prayer to birth the next Petra house. Because if you don't go, he will make you go. And so the contractions start. The pains of the new. And suddenly, the child's head engages. And when the head engages, suddenly the child enters the birth canal. Somebody say with me, the birth canal. The birth canal is a lonely place. It's a dark place. It seems like you're suffocating in the birth canal. Trust me, I've been in the birth canal. The people who you thought were your friends suddenly leave you alone in the birth canal. In the birth canal, it's just you and God. Like the patriarch who wrestled with God and said, God, I will not leave you. Me and you are alone here. God, God tried to go. He said, you're going nowhere. God broke his hip. He said, break everything. I'm holding on to you. Has anybody ever been there? Yes, sir. This is not fancy praying. It's not nice tongues. No, it's not that kind of tongues. This one is guttural groaning. Oh, 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 oh. That's the kind of prayer. Nothing fancy. It's not this prayer you're praying, then your, your mascara is running, then you know to dab. No, 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 no. It's not that kind of prayer. You, this kind of prayer, you are so unsophisticated because you are groaning. You're holding on to the horns of the altar of prayer. And if you go through the birth canal, you then come out. A new child is born. And how many know that when a new child is born, if the child doesn't cry, 
they smack the child to make the child cry because that cry is a shout of victory. I have arrived. May you have a cry of victory in your lips. The seventh thing as I come towards the end is that don't think that there will be the new without a contention. You want God to do a new thing in your life, in your marriage, in your family, in the community, in the church, then you have to be ready for a fight. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9. A great and effective door has been opened to me, but there are always many adversaries. So somebody wants the new, prepare for the fights. Can someone say amen? Amen. amen. Did you receive that? Ah, hallelujah. Praise God. So I'd like to read the scripture, Joshua chapter 1, please. Joshua chapter 1, and verse 2 to 3. You know, that was quite prophetic, isn't it? Right. It starts quite prophetic. And um, when we got the news of... Is everything tripped off? Okay, it's back now. Thank you. All right. So this message came to mind when, when I got the news that we were being told to, to leave. And it, it, it plays on my mind every time I think about the fact that we're going to go through a phase of discomfort and that we're going to get to the semi-promised land. Praise God. It's a semi-promised land we're going to. All right, so let's read Joshua chapter 1. In verse 2 to 3, it says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. All right, let's, I was reading from verse 1. It says, Moses, my servant, is dead. So this building for us is, is a dead face, right? I'm not saying this building is dying. Get, get, the, get the context right. We're moving out, okay? It says, Now therefore, what should we do? Arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I'm going to do what? Give to them, the children of Israel. God is going to give us a new place. Amen. He's going to give us a new place. Look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. He says, And every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, what would happen? He says, Upon I have given you as I said to who? To Moses. God has given us a place in this land, right? And once we step in there, that is our place in the name of Jesus. All right, one more scripture, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm not preaching this, man. I'm just reading a few scriptures. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 23. Before chapter 12, let's read verse 11, please. Chapter 11, please. Verse 8 to 10. And then we'll go to chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8 to 10. All right, let's read this together. It says, by faith, Abraham did what? Obeyed. Obeyed when he was called to go out of the place which he would receive as an inheritance. You see, no matter what happens, when God wants you to go to a place, you have to step out in obedience, right? We have to step out in obedience. He says, and he went out, not knowing where he was going. As of today, I'm not exactly sure where we're going to be using, it, right, um, for some time. Uh, by, by that, I mean that we'll be in Rukud, and then the building we're going to use for some time. I don't know. He says, but verse 10, look at verse 10. It says, by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling where in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. But look at verse 10. For he looked for a city, or for he waited for where? For the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is who? God. So we're trusting him that he will guide us to a city, Right? Whose builder and the maker of that place is who? God. And then look at chapter 12. Then look at chapter 12. With that in mind, look at chapter 12. 
verse 22 to 23. It says, but we have come to where? To Mount Zion, right? So we're going to our semi-Zion. Praise God. We're going to where? Semi-Zion. Of course, you know, you know the context. We're going to where? Semi-Zion. Because we're still going to move one more time. One more time as the Lord leaves. All right. He says, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of what? Angels. Look at verse 23. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, who are what? Registered in heaven. To God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men, made perfect. And so, the same way God guided the Israelites to the promised land, God is going to guide us to our own Zion in the name of Jesus, to our own city. And when we get there, we would have the host of heaven with us, as they have always been with us, right? We're not going alone. God is with us. Praise God. All right. So, we're going to go through a little bit of discomfort. Because we're going to be packing up and setting up from next week Sunday. So all the men in the house shout, yeah. yeah. Make it deeper. Don't, don't copy my voice. Make it deeper. Shout, yeah. yeah. I can't hear you. Do it one more time. All the men in the house. If you have muzzle, can I say shout, yeah. yeah. All right, good. Thank you. So we're going to be doing some work. Praise God. Because we are going to be setting up and packing up every Sunday, which may be a bit, you know, a bit of work for us. But we trust God. <laughs> this man is not a Christian. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we let the women rest, okay? Is that okay? Right. We let them rest. And then, you know, we, the men will do the work. Praise God. So from next week, Sunday, by God's grace, as the Lord leaves, we'll move to Rookwood. Is that okay? It's just a school down the road. It has more space, uh, you know, for some time. And we trust God that, you know, God will grant us favor in the name of Jesus. There's a building that I believe that will be good for us, United Reformed Church. We're setting up a meeting with the trustees of the church. The church is very cheap. It's 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 just 750K. It's very cheap. <laughs> For God, it's very cheap. Right? It's very cheap. But we trust God. We trust God. We trust God. We trust God to guide us and to lead us. And um, you know it's actually possible to get that building for free. You know it's very possible to get it for free. It's very possible to get it for free. It's very possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very possible. I'm absolutely sure. God sent us here, you know. God sent us. God sent. God told us to come to this town, and He has made room for us in this town. Praise God! So we go. We're setting up a meeting. No date confirmed yet, but we've looked at it. The pastors have gone to look at it, and we like it. You know, I might post some of the videos on the church group, and we we'll hope and trust God that that's where God is leading us to go. But in the meantime, we will be with Rookwood. We'll use Rookwood, and God will help us in the name of Jesus. All right, shall we rise on our feet? Let's pray a little bit as we close this chapter and move to the next chapter. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray. You know. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. I'd like us to thank God for this building that we're in. I'd like us to thank God. I'd like us to thank God. I, I, I like to tell us a story of this building, actually. If you, you see, this, I believe this building, I just saw it this morning. Can you imagine? We've been here three years, and I just saw it this morning. I just noticed a plaque outside there. You know, this building, I think, was built by a family. It was built by a family. The, the family, you know, the, the, the keyboardist of, uh, or the pianist, it's there at the, at the entrance, right there. The man was the pianist of of a parish for 50 years and when they passed on the family the widow and the children donated this building in honor of him praise god and that's one man we trust god that this place will remain a church in the name of jesus no matter what happens they built it in honor of a man who served the community or the church for 50 years and we trust that that man's memory will be kept in the name of jesus and so we give god praise let's lift up our voice and thank god for this place 
for giving us this place. For giving us this place. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lift your voice and just say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God has spoken to us in this place so many testimonies, so many testimonies of his goodness and his faithfulness. So, Lord, we thank you. We we'll bless you. We give you praise. We worship you, Jesus. We adore you. We magnify your name because you are God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory and honor be unto your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. We adore you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. I'd like us to speak for that as we march out of this place today. We we'll move to the next phase of this church in the name of Jesus. We we'll move into our prophetic destiny as a church in the name of Jesus. The light of Petra also continue to shine in the name of Jesus. As we step out, we step up into the new in the name of Jesus. We step into the new, into the new in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We thank you, Father. Be exalted, O God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory and honor be unto your name, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And forever you are God. We'll bless, we'll bless you, O oh Lord. We'll bless you, Lord. You are holy. Holy, holy Lord. And forever you are God. You are God. We bless you, Lord. You are into the new as Petra house in the name of Jesus. We commit our ways into your hands, Lord, as we have always obeyed you. We ask in the name of Jesus, you will guide us, and wherever you lead us, we will follow in the name of Jesus. Thank you, because the light of Petra house will continue to shine, and shine brighter in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please be seated. All right, so before I take my seat, we, I have a baby dedication to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, it, it's a good thing that, you know, that God is blessing us and adding unto us and increasing us on every side. Okay? On every side. Don't worry. Don't, don't stop the streaming. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, just, let's just do it. Okay. Praise God. All right. So, we're going to welcome Iria Yomi today to church this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Church, we're rejoicing. Okay. We're rejoicing and we're celebrating God for another addition into our family. And so, please let's rise on our feet as the choir helps us with a song that we can dance to as I welcome Iria Yomi today to church this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Choir, please help us. Please, let's dance and rejoice with them. Let's welcome Mr. and Mrs. Pelumi and Chibala as they bring Iria Yomite to church this morning. Oh, be lifted above all the gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Be lifted. Worship, oh, glorious God, oh, glorious God, we praise your name, Lord. Lord. We lay our crown, we lay our crown, oh, glorious God, oh, glorious God. 
I pose on the door. We lay our cross and worship you, oh, lifter. I pose on the door. We lay our cross and worship you, oh, glorious God. One thing we ask of you, one thing that we deserve, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our heart. One thing we ask of you, one thing, thing that we deserve, and as we worship, and as we worship you, Lord, come and change our heart. We pronounce you blessed. We pronounce you blessed. All the days of your life, we pronounce you blessed. We pronounce that your path is blessed. Your path in life is blessed. Your journey in life is blessed. Everything you do in life is blessed. In the name of Jesus, God keep you. God protect you. God strengthen you. God guide you. All the days of your life in the name of Jesus. No evil will come upon you in the name of Jesus. Everywhere your name is mentioned in your meeting today, it will be for good in the name of Jesus. Oh, everything you do in life prospers in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God will guide you in everything you do in the name of Jesus. You will not be sick. It will not come near you. No sickness will come near you in the name of Jesus. Your light shines and it shines bright in the name of Jesus. You will be a source of joy to your family in the name of Jesus. You will bring good reports always in the name of Jesus. The goodness and the favor of God is upon you from this day forward in the name of Jesus. You will grow in wisdom. You will grow in understanding understanding God be with you in everything you do in the name of Jesus go forth and excel and shine for the Lord in the name of Jesus the hand of God is upon you all the days of your life in the name of Jesus nothing will be impossible for you to achieve in life in the name of Jesus and so I pronounce you blessed this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and I decree that your feet is planted in the house of God in the name of Jesus nothing will change it in the name of Jesus you will not move away from the house of God in the name of Jesus the fear of God is planted in your heart always in the name of Jesus thank you Father we decree him blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen praise God Hallelujah and you're welcome to church. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. So we we have a gift for him. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Church, please let's put our hands together for that. And choir, please, you can sing. What a marvelous God, what a marvelous God, He has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God, what a marvelous, 
Listen to my fellow things for me, I love you. One of my fellow stuff, one of my fellow stuff. He has all my fellow things for me. Hallelujah. One of my fellow stuff, one of my fellow things. He used to do my fellow things for me. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Have we been blessed? Are we excited? I don't know about you, but I'm very excited. Are you excited? I need to see the en energy come true. Are you ready? Are you ready? I am ready for where God is taking us to. I'm ready to see the proclaimers take over and over town. Amen. I'm ready for the birth of the new Petra house. So I am ready. I'm ready for the change. Say, I am ready. Praise the Lord. So just our normal announcements today. Um, again, once again, welcome to all first timers. Someone would be with you after service just to have a quick chat. Please don't rush up. Stay behind. Um, we have a little thing for you. Um, in terms of our Sunday service for next week, please keep an eye on our WhatsApp group chat. Further information will be provided um, in the group chat. So if you're not in the group chat, please signify by raising your hand. No? Everyone is in there? Perfect. So keep an eye. So in terms of our normal announcements, as we go into the normal announcements, so our Sunday services would hold where it's been announced, Probably Rookwood next Sunday, starting at 10 a.m. with Sunday school and main service at 10.30. Bible study will hold every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Please join us. Our prayer platform, APOP, from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Also on Zoom, Mondays to Friday. Then our ladies rise to pray holds on the first Friday of every month between 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Also on Zoom. And same with the men's time to pray as well. Same time, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on Zoom. Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up with the screen. <laughs> so... Yep, so we talk about the prayer meeting then. On the second Friday of every month, we host our worship and prayer feast. Also on Zoom, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. And then our night of intercession holds every Monday at 9 p.m. on Zoom. If you have any prayer points, please request a form from the ushers and they would, you can complete it and submit it back. Please bring your kids along. Hopefully in Rookwood, we will have a separate designated areas for the kids so they can have their various bubbles um, and attend their classes. The ushers are going to show the orange forms. For the first time, as there's a form in your bag, please fill it. If you've got any prayer requests, please fill the blue slips that the ushers are going to wave right now. And if you'd like to volunteer, Please fill the forms available. Finally, follow us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Like, subs subscribe to our YouTube channels where we'll stream all our services. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. All right. So let's rise on our feet as we close the service. Praise God. You know, look around properly. <laughs> look around, look around, because it may just be our last Sunday. Most likely it's our last Sunday in there. Take a picture if you want. All right. <laughs> All right, praise God. Please uh, hold someone's hands as we um, recite our closing church. All right, let's do it. May, now, may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make me complete in every good work to do his will, working in me what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.